Hi everybody, I'm Josh Earl, one half of the Hoops Guys. And over the past 45 videos of ours, you've probably heard Will and I talk about our ideal combination of skill sets in a player. We're particularly fond of the idea of a big who not only is a rim protecting defensive linchpin on defense, but is also a capable floor spacing big from three on offense. That skill set combination is incredibly rare. And there's really only one player active in the NBA right now who can seemingly fill that role at the moment, and that's Serge Ibaka from the Thunder. But Serge wasn't the first NBA player to have shown a particular prowess in protecting the rim and swatting shots and shooting above average from three and stretching the floor as a big man. That player who preceded Serge Ibaka, but doesn't really get talked about much, was a player before their time, a guy named Rafe LaFrance. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with Rafe LaFrance, he was a 6'11", 240-pound big who had a 10-year NBA career with the Denver Nuggets, Dallas Mavericks, Boston Celtics, and the Portland Trailblazers. He was a two-time first-team All-American at Kansas and was drafted third overall in the 1998 NBA draft ahead of future multiple-time All-Stars and likely Hall of Famers Vince Carter, Paul Pierce, and his eventual Mavs teammate Dirk Nowitzki. But right from the very beginning of his NBA career, Rafe showed those skill sets that Will and I find particularly appealing as he averaged 1.4 blocks per game and a block rate of 3.1% and shot 38.7% from three in his rookie year. And over his 10-year career in the NBA, Rafe LaFrance had eight seasons with a block rate greater than 3% and six seasons where he shot over 36% from three on at least one attempt per game. And that's pretty rare. In fact, out of 20 rotation players, small note here, rotation players in this case is defined as players who average at least 12 minutes per game therefore played in at least a quarter of the game, showing that they are in fact rotation players and not just guys who put up numbers in garbage time situations. But anyway, out of those 20 rotation players in NBA history who had a season where they had a block rate greater than 3% and shot higher than 36% from three on at least one attempt per game, Rafe LaFrance had by far the most seasons matching that criteria. He posted five years with a block rate over 3% and a three point percentage higher than 36% on at least one attempt a game. The next closest player was Robert Ory, Big Shot Rob, with three seasons, and there were a couple of players who had two seasons, and everyone else just met that criteria once. So we're talking about a really rare combination of skill sets here. But let's take this a step further. So while a block rate of 3% signifies a player who's a pretty good rim protector, what about elite rim protectors? In the past four NBA seasons, only about 12 to 20 players in each season had a block rate higher than 4%. Out of all the players in NBA history, all the rotation players in NBA history, only five, five players had seasons where they posted at least a block rate of 4% 
and shot at least 36% from three on, at, on one attempt a game or more. Those five players, Manu Bull, Brad Lois, Serge Ibaka, and Terrence Jones from this current season to date, and Rafe LaFrance. And only one of those five players match that criteria in more than one year. You want to hazard a guess who it was? You're right! Rafe LaFrance matched that criteria in three separate seasons. But let's, let's further hammer this home. Over the past four seasons in the NBA, there have been less than 10 rotation players in each season to post a block rate of 5% or more. So that's kind of the, the cutoff threshold for really elite rim protecting, shot blocking prowess in basketball. And when we look at that historically, only three players in NBA history, when you look at players who played at least 12 minutes a game, and had a block rate greater than 5% and shot over 36% from three on at least one attempt per game, only three players qualified. Manu Paul, Serge Ibaka, this season, right now, and Rafe LaFrance. And guess who was the only one of those three to do that more than once? Rafe LaFrance. So no matter how we kind of look at it, Rafe LaFrance was seemingly the first real prolific floor spacing big who was also a rim protecting presence on defense. Very rare, rare skill set as we've alluded to. So why isn't Rafe LaFrance mentioned much? Well, there's a few reasons for that. One, he suffered a lot of injuries in his career. In his rookie year, just 12 games into it, he tore his ACL in his left knee. He only played 17 games for the Boston Celtics in the 2003-2004 season due to knee issues. And his final two years with the Portland Trail Blazers, he only played in 66 games total over that two year stretch. On top of the injury problems, he was viewed as highly overpaid by the media and the fans because in 2002, the Dallas Mavericks signed him to a seven year, $70 million deal because this was back when Mark Cuban was really leveraging his deep wallet before the collective bargaining agreement actually added some teeth to the luxury tax situation by putting in that graduated luxury tax uh, fee system as well as the repeater tax stuff, which is why Cubans no longer really doling out those high, high dollar deals. But it wasn't just those two things. On top of it, Rafe LaFrance wasn't really a score. His career points per game average was just 10.1, and his highest points per game in any one of his 10 seasons was 13.8 points per game in his rookie year, which once again, he only played 12 games. And if you've looked at any of the research uh, that's been done on what drives player value in basketball, and trust me, I have. I, I did it for my master's capstone project every single research project trying to discern what drives player value in basketball has found that by far the primary determinant of a player's value or at least their perceived value is scoring and not necessarily scoring efficiency but just how many points do they get per game and Rafe didn't score a lot of points, so he wasn't viewed as a particularly good player. On top of it, 
he, like I mentioned, he was drafted ahead of multiple time All-Stars and future Hall of Famers, Vince Carter, Paul Pierce, and Dirk Nowitzki. And from an environmental standpoint, the 2.9 style defenses that have made floor spacing bigs and uh, elite rim protecting defensive linchpin type players so valuable nowadays wasn't really in vogue until Rafe LaFrance's final season when Tom Thibodeau's defensive stylings helped the Boston Celtics win the championship. So altogether, I guess what I'm saying is Rafe LaFrance was simply a player before his time. If you were playing today where their preventative and recuperative measures for knee injuries are much better, he would be much, much higher valued across the league for his floor space and abilities as a big and his elite rim protecting capabilities on defense. And let's be honest, he'd probably be one of Will and My's favorite players. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you wanted to add your two cents on Ray LaFrance or maybe suggest some other players that you felt were before their time and maybe uh, players you'd like us to do a video on in the future, comment below. If you want to share this video on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, wherever you want to share it, you're more than welcome to, and we'd appreciate it. And if you want to be notified when our next videos drop, hit that subscribe button. Most of all, I want to say thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.